All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS Livestream. Today, we're finally going to give some um, overdue love to BXJS website, and uh, I'm planning to move it basically from uh, using Next.js to using Gatsby and making it into a completely static website because honestly, I see no reason for it to be Next.js because right now we have this. Um, where was it? I think it was in the server. So we're now doing a bunch of requests to GitHub and there's like GitHub API bottlenecking or rather rate limits, right? And it's all very fragile, right? So since BXJS website is really just the, um, God damn it, where's my link? There we go. So since it's basically just a collection of links that is updated on a weekly basis whenever I publish the new BXJS weekly and then there's just like a bunch of other static web like stuff, right? I don't really see any reason to keep it uh, being Next.js. And what I want to do instead is make it a Gatsby website that's going to be statically compiled and deployed as a purely static website. And then we're going to have a BXJS weekly uh, repo trigger the builds for BXJS website whenever I basically push anything to the master, right? So because this is when the release happens, right? Maybe we can even try and go and set up the um, GitHub Actions at some point to actually trigger the builds for BXJS website. But uh, yeah, so maybe we can also make it a bit more, uh, you know, mobile friendly because right now it's, I mean, huge thanks to the people uh, who contributed to it and made it a bit better, but it's still like, Neh. so, you know. Okay, um, right, so where do we start? I guess let's just start with going to Gatsby JS and going through the basic um, setting started, right? So. I have a new development setup, by the way. So this is something that I've configured uh, yesterday, basically. And uh, because I got tired of uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux VSL hanging on me whenever I run npm install, like not every time, but sometimes it's like this is the most infuriating part. If I knew that, you know, it would be consistent, I wouldn't care about that as much. But because it happens randomly, I got tired. So now I have a Hyper-V virtual machine with Ubuntu running in background. And then I just use the SSH from VS Code to go into that machine and basically work in it. It works amazingly well. So, okay, going back to the, I probably should dock my VS Code over here. There we go. Um, right, going back to Gatsby, we do need to do what? Okay, homebrew node, yes, I got that, I got that, I got git, uh, Gatsby CLI, right. So there is, I don't, I'm not gonna run npm install it, we're just gonna use npx. Um, it is Gatsby CLI, there we go. So we need to run what? We need to run npx, Gatsby CLI, and then a new hello world, Gatsby starter, hello world, right? So I guess this would work for us, but I'm gonna call it bxjs website, right? And this is gonna scaffold it into a new repo. I think that should be fine for us. So I'm gonna run the scaffold. We are gonna remove quite a lot of stuff. So essentially, um, Clean instead of CLI. Yeah, I, th this is definitely like German slash Russian way of saying it. I know that CLI is like the proper way, but I am too used to saying CLI. <laughs> I know this is completely wrong, but you know, this is, yeah, that's, that's, that's how I just, um, okay, let's just get back to this. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, definitely I've heard, uh, I've heard that, you know, more than once already people go like, isn't it actually CLI? Yes, yes, it is. I'm just terrible at this. <laughs> okay. Um, right. So we are doing that. We're scaffolding the thing. So what I'm going to do is basically we already have, um, yes, let me sign my commits. Okay, cool. So I think I should also go ahead and clone the old website and just make the master branch into the old version or whatever branch. And then uh, we can go from there. Uh, hey, Samohavitz, welcome to the stream. All right, so let me just clone that. Git clone um, BXJS website, BXJS website old. Let's just call it this way. Um, yes, there you go, my passphrase. I still haven't configured all the environments, so it still bugs me about the passphrases and everything, but it is a lot faster than the VSL, which is quite surprising to me. So it's a full fledged VM is actually faster than running a VSL stuff. It's like, you see how complex this thing is. Okay, um, let me see. So we got head develop master. Or, okay, so I'm gonna say git branch old version. And I'm gonna check out old version and I'm gonna do push origin 
my uh, no wait push minus u origin old version. So I'm just gonna copy the master branch to old version. So we have some sort of a backup. Cool. Um, we no longer need that. So I can just kill that. Uh, and now we're going to go into the XJS website. Quick question, do you have a Node.js installed on Windows or just on the Ubuntu? Right now, this is just purely on Ubuntu side. So if 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 I just, you know, this is literally VM. So if I go into the my Hyper-V manager, you will actually see my Ubuntu VM. This is it running. It's a Ubuntu 18 LTS server edition. And I just basically SSH into it, right? So everything, uh, the code server side, the Node.js, the Yarn, no VSL stuff at all, right? Uh, the problem for me, I know that this is not a problem for some people, but I was unlucky. So VSL, whenever I try to run npm install or kill the node modules folder and rerun npm install, basically whenever I do a high volumes of file manipulations, right? So whenever I try to remove a lot of files or npm install a lot of files, Sometimes, not every time, that's the interesting thing. So sometimes VSL just locks the file management completely for Windows and VSL side. So the only way to make system work again is just to reboot. And if you don't reboot, it just goes into like, you know, blue screen basically at some point because it cannot manipulate even the system files, which is like, yeah, that sounds like a terrible bug. And the most annoying part is that it's not consistent. So I don't know what causes it. So I decided to opt into basically using the, um, just using the VM because it just worked better. I will switch back to VSL whenever the version 2.0 is back because it basically, as far as I read, it doesn't really have those problems. But yeah, it's like, you know, VM works better for now. I'm having some problems as well, including having different versions of Node and PM and all of that. Oh yeah, this, I mean, uh, the VSL 2 should come by the end of the year, if I remember correctly. So this was the phrasing from Microsoft side. I'm hoping they're gonna be like a November update or something. So together with the, I mean, they announced the new laptops and surfaces and stuff, right? So I'm hoping they will release those together with the new Windows 10 version. And they are releasing like November 20 something, I think. So yeah, this, at least my guess would be that, but uh, we'll see. From what I've heard, it's already like even the, even on the insiders version, the VSL2 is actually super stable already, like a lot stabler than the, a lot stabler, is that, is that even a correct way of saying that? But okay, um, I digress, let's just get back on track. So we got that working, let's yarn start this. Um, okay, so here's the, one of the newest, like this, the way the VS code is built is just fascinatingly awesome. So right now we're running this inside of VM, right? And we executed the um, website and it's now on the VM on port 8000. Obviously I will not be able to open that in the browser, but if I click here and I say, um, hey, VS Code, forward this port for me and just forward 8000 and we'll call it uh, Gatsby. And now it's done and I can just access my VM right here without any additional configuration, which is freaking awesome. Okay, uh, so we got the basic setup. Let me think for a second. So what we got here, we got the fav icon, which is Gatsby, I assume, yep. And we got our index page. Okay, cool. Uh, yes, the roads, I mean, not quite like the Docker. I mean, I guess it is kind of like the Docker because you explicitly just say, hey, forward this for me, and then it just works. <laughs> which is another cool part is that Docker doesn't work on VSL, right? So the VSL one doesn't support it. So you have to either use the Docker for Windows and then do some, you know, forwarding magic essentially, or well, use a VM, which is annoying. In this case, I have Docker installed inside of, uh, inside of the Ubuntu VM and I can just use it. And if I need, I can just forward port, which works freaking awesome. So, okay, but anyway, <laughs> again, I'm going, I'm getting sidetracked again. So let me think for a second. So what do we need to do? We actually want, uh, we want to generate the data for us, right? So we actually want to get, I mean, no worries. I, I enjoy ranting about that essentially, <laughs> but I'll, I'll just, I'm trying to, you know, at least get the first version done today because if we just keep talking here as fascinating and as awesome as it is, I would basically end up doing nothing. So um, yes. Okay, so we got the, uh, maybe I shouldn't use the starter. Let me think. So I know that the hello, uh, the hello, that, that sounds too Russian. Hello world, the starter is uh, very bare. I remember there was a better starting point. Uh, da, 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 wait a second, Gatsby 
Is there a Godspeed starter Tailwind? This is my new favorite thing, by the way. Uh, the Tailwind CSS is freaking awesome. And uh, I've like used it in a couple of projects now. It is so good, especially so when you have a designer to work with. Okay, so this one is updated yesterday. So it seems pretty fresh, Tailwind config. I would prefer to use a post CSS. Okay, there's the per CSS config. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe we just go with the, is it the same one? No, is it different? What is it like fork or something? Okay, this, this one's definitely not updated. So yeah, I don't know, do I want to do that? Or do I just want to go? So let's see. So what does it actually have? Godsby, Tailwind, Preteria, Slints. What do you have included? Let's check. Uh, plugin, post CSS, per CSS. Okay, so basically has, yeah, I guess, you know what? Let's just go with this setup. So, um, da -da 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 -da, clone, oh, we need HTTPS thing. So I guess I'm gonna re scaffold the whole thing, kill the XGS website, and then we're gonna go npx Gatsby CLI. And then I'm just gonna use the tail there. That is probably wrong. Nope, cut, come on. This dot git should not be there. Okay, I think that should scaffold the Tailwind CSS for us. Once again, you know, I, I like stuff like Bulma, Bootstrap or whatever, but the moment you have to customize anything, you're gonna rewrite half of the thing anyway. And this is like my experience from like a dozen of projects. It's like as soon as you get a designer or whatever, it's, it's always ends up being, okay, now I have to modify this component, that component. Um, Tailwind CSS, on the other hand, just gives you this tiny, tiny CSS building blocks that you can very quickly, first of all, prototype with. It works amazingly well. And then once you're done, you just take them and extract them into your own custom CSS classes using post CSS, um, whatever they call like Pragmas functions or whatever. It works amazingly well. So I am a huge fan now. Okay. Yarn start here. Let's see what we get here. So I think there's, okay, so there's like even components, pages, styles. Cool. So, okay. So we got the SEO. So this is the basic setup that we, I guess the, not the hello. But they, like I remember Gatsby having some sort of a um, template that was a bit more all in one than the hello world, which basically does nothing. Getting to know Gatsby building blocks. Um, where was this plug? Was it in tutorials or something? I remember last time I did that, that was like a bit different. <laughs> now, what am I missing? Gatsby website. This is Hello World starter. Okay, uh, was it in a starter? Starter theme block, no. Gatsby, okay. You know what, whatever. Uh, let's see what do we have here. There we go, that looks a lot better. So we got uh, some headers, we got the footer, we got the cats. This is the best part about that, of course. Okay, so I'm gonna collapse that for now. This is illustrations that we don't really need for now. I mean, I don't really care about that yet. So we got 404. Uh, let's try that. How does the 404 looks? Uh, yeah, where's the preview button? Uh, preview. Yeah, we go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this is perfect. Okay, cool. Um, about, we don't need about page, I guess. We don't need contact page, so we can kill those. Delete permanently, delete permanently. I think basically my plan would be to fit almost everything into one page and then make a custom pages for the BXJS weekly episodes. And that's basically it. Okay, so we got section, we don't need this image. Uh, we don't need the illustrations. We're gonna go with the SEO. We uh, keywords, title. This is gonna be BXJS. Um, yeah, I guess BXJS is fine. It's gonna be BXJS. Um, BXJS Weekly, JavaScript, React. That is fine. Okay. I think we're more or less good here. So I'm going to go back here. There we go. We got this thing. Uh, cool thing about frameworks like Tailwind that you can get super small CSS bundle using tools like, yeah, this is also what definitely one of the advantages is because you can very easily track down which CSS exactly have you used. So you can basically kill everything. Uh, this probably is responsive. Yeah, it is. It looks fine. I mean, you know, not super amazing, but okay. Okay. Um, next thing is, it has the layout. So I guess the footer is included in the layouts and I don't really care about footer much. So 
Uh, do I? Yeah, I guess I don't care about the footer, so we're just gonna kill it. We're gonna leave the header and the body, and then we're gonna start modifying header. So site metadata. Yes, I guess we have to edit the config and just go um, bxjs uh, JavaScript podcast. Um, yeah, you know what? Just go with JavaScript community. <laughs> I did, I did write all of that stuff for the old website, right? I should just pick it up from there. So doo -doo -doo, there we go. I'm just going to copy this as a description, which I guess nobody reads anyway. Um, that is, I don't want to line breaks over here. Okay, uh, author is going to be Yamalite. These configs are all for this SEO. I mean, it's not just for the SEO, it is automatically added to the SEO, but it's also uh, used, you can use it basically using the GraphQL. For example, here we take the website title from the metadata so that we don't have to uh, manually write it here, right? It's uh, quite handy for like when you use templates, for example. Okay, so I am, um, here's a question. Do you want some nice icon or something? Uh, so I don't need that anymore. We got this running um, site date title. What? Uh, I did it. Let me just recompile everything. Uh, like the cool thing about Gatsby is that uh, the way it works is you construct the entities for its backend, so the, the pre-compilation backends that provides those entities through GraphQL API. You can then use this GraphQL statically, so it's going to be evaluated on a build time, to construct, well, anything you want really, like, you know, starting from the, um, starting from the homepage title, whatever, metadata, you know. Okay, I'm just gonna rename this to bxjs. Why are you, why is it resetting it? I don't know, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna recompile it once more. We're gonna leave it at that. Okay, so we got the helmet, we got the manifest uh, starter, short name starter. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Uh, it's gonna be bxjs, uh, minimal UI, tailwind icon. I'm gonna leave that for now. Plugin offline is nice as well. Okay, uh, that's fine. So we got the header. Let me think for a second. Uh, you'll be, uh, I mean, there will no, there will be no rest because there will, we won't have any backend. We're going to be statically compiling everything down to the uh, Gatsby essentially. So this is kind of the whole point of migration because I like the current website doesn't need any backend <laughs> to be honest. Okay, so we got uh, those links. I don't really need them, I guess. Um, okay. Hey, front end Nexus, welcome to the stream. All right, so I'm going to kill that. We don't need menu either. No, I guess you know what? I'm going to leave that for now here. We're going to kill this icon here because I don't need it. We're going to leave the title. There we go. Okay, um, let us. Yes, exactly. Just fetching from the GitHub on build time and then showing it uh, as a static website once we are done, basically. So. Tailwind, let's go to the, like one of the things about Tailwind is that uh, it has so many classes, you can probably never remember all of them. It does have a very nice color palette, so we can basically use that to just uh, style everything. Like, okay, yellow 500, let's see. So where is our PG yellow 500? So just do that and we now have our nice, uh, that is too bright, I guess. So let's try 600 maybe. They look, yeah, this looks nicer. There we go. Okay, why is it so big? Here's the question. Uh, whoops, that is the wrong button. So I'm gonna go into the dev tools here. Let me make them bigger for you. And then pop them down below and we're gonna tweak the CSS a bit just to see this side. Why is it so, is it this, right? So this max with four XL, MX out. Yeah, there we go. There's the padding. So it's a bit too large for my liking. It is still too freaking large. Is that because of this? There we go. So I guess, um, yep, 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 yep. That's exactly what I want. So I guess we can just kill that because I want the title bar to be that big. Uh, so we just leave it at this, right? Oh, we got the nice header. Um, we are gonna have a search bar there and additional buttons basically, but for now, what we want to do is we basically can kill, okay, layout, we don't need to touch anymore. We need the index page, right? So we need the index page. Let me think for a second. So I guess now we have to build the, uh, you know what, let me just commit that because otherwise I will definitely forget about this. Um, this website, get ads, get commit. 
Um, clean up playouts at basic bxjs metadata. Yeah. Come on. Right, there we go. Okay, um, now then, uh, what do we want to do? I actually probably shouldn't commit that just yet, but I probably should check out. Here's the thing. I don't want to wipe the old repository, so I guess I need to check it out and just move all the files over. BXGS website to BXGS website Gatsby. I'm going to clone, uh, git clone old website. And do, 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 uh, no, that's that's a wrong key phrase. This is CSS atomic design. I'm still debating about it. So many classes, but the advantages. I mean, the cool thing about it is that you can use those classes to prototype. And then later on, once you know that, okay, this is exactly how it's going to be, you can just take those classes and extract them into one class that's going to be like, you know, header, for example. We're going to do that a bit later. So I can basically show you how it works. Okay. Um, let me just kill, I guess, everything in here. So I don't want to kill um, all the files. Okay, uh, indexes, kill pages. I guess I shouldn't have killed readme file. That's probably a bad idea. But okay, we do need to kill Docker file as well. Um, let me put the readme back. Readme, um, come on. Okay, uh, it does what? Oh, it's capital. Okay, uh, git co head. There we go. Okay. Cool. So now killed all the old stuff. So now we can basically move everything here to here, right? Cool. Did I override read me or not? I think I did, right? Yep. Okay, Git. Uh, so I'm going to check out the No, wait, do I want to check out the read me? That's a good question. So what does read me says now? Um, reload this, we got this, this is now Oh, okay, didn't copy the dot files. Um, I also should probably stop this because it will crash now. <laughs> okay, um, let me think Gatsby dot star. Uh, no, that's not what I want. God damn it. I shouldn't have pressed tab there. We want to copy all of that here. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, okay, let me think for a second. So go to the Gatsby website. What do we have here left? Just the git repo, which is perfectly fine. Whoops. Uh, so we can just kill the Gatsby scaffold, right? So we can go into the website itself. Refresh this. There we go. Git status. Okay. Um, git diff. What is the readme difference? So, okay. Gatsby starter. Okay. We're going to edit the readme a bit, I guess. Can kill that. Uh, just edit the we can show changes. There we go. Um, okay, yeah, the old, <laughs> the old readme wasn't exactly good. So you know what, I'm gonna go with that. The XGS website, there we go. Perfect. Okay, cool. Um, okay, get I'm gonna add everything, I'm gonna stash it. I'm gonna, uh, why is it public folder? I guess, okay, public folder is something we gotta ignore, right? So it ignore, um, it should be in here or it is for whatever reason is not. Okay, um, public and cache, we ignore those. Okay, um, whoops, okay, git. <clears throat> uh, let me think. We need to check out into develop first, right? Git unstash. So we're gonna. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, reset hard. Git unstash. Apply the current stash. There's go. There's our Gatsby thing. Okay. Uh, git ignore. Now we're gonna put the public and caches. Perfect. So just to. Uh, I probably should just expand it all the way. Just double check that we are adding all this needed. Okay, git commit scaffold new Gatsby project, right? There we go. Cool, we got that done. Okay, now we need to generate the data. Git 101, we're basically, yeah, I mean, I just, <laughs> okay, uh, let me just 
there's a thing I need to restart D shell one. I'm gonna go and do yarn start. So theoretically it should, uh, what? What do you mean though? I, it is there. Okay, I guess it lost the pointer. Okay. Are we running yet? Come on. So the next thing we're basically gonna write is we're gonna take the existing code that we have in the old um, websites, right? The one that fetches the releases and, well, in our case, I just basically outputted them as is from the API. But in this case, I'm, do I have any forwarding? No, oh yes, I do. Okay, so why are we, why are we not working? What is happening now? Come on now. There we go, okay, cool. We're working now, this is great, cool, this is all good. Uh, so just to refresh to be sure, yes, we are live, perfect. Okay, um, so let's, I guess, start by fetching the, um, by generating pages, right? So if I remember correctly, that's be, there was a documentation about that, now we just have to find it. <laughs> I mean, I could copy my old code, but that sounds boring, right? So we're just gonna just gonna go through tutorials here. So using WordPress source plugin, uh, making site, making e-commerce, using Prismatic, writing docs, making content with Netlify. You had transformer, I think it was transformer plugin, source plugins, there we go, this is what we want. Okay, source plugins. Uh, I guess we need to write our own Gatsby plugin, right? So I'm gonna create a new folder. Um, no, not here. I'm gonna create it in here. Um, plugins, and it's gonna be plugin called Gatsby BXJS plugin, right? So it's gonna, gonna be that. Now let's see, source plugin. Uh, okay, this is the source plugin. Yeah, so this is exactly what we want. Uh, Okay, so here's the thing. The plugin that we have, we'll have to read some sort of, no, it doesn't, we don't need files, right? So we can just fetch everything from API build time. So we don't care about that. Right, where is the source code for the plugin? Mm, source plugins, there is. Um, did I just copy it last time from the source plugin? I think I did. Okay, um, packages, Gatsby plugin. Okay, yeah, let's let's conform to the to the naming BXJS is what we're gonna call it. We need Gatsby plugin source, I think, right? Uh, file source or whatever it was called. Where is it? Uh, file file system. Yes, there we go. Source files. Okay, so we're gonna rename it to source BXJS. There we go. We're getting there. Okay, uh, so we need the package JSON. Um, package JSON. This is going to be our plugin. I don't. We don't actually need package JSON, right? We can just reference the file directly. So, uh, okay, let me think. So we got source here, and we're going to have the Gatsby node file. This is what I remember. I wonder if I should just copy my old plugin. Like, I feel like you know, I've, I I feel a bit like being lazy here, but I don't know if I um, want to do that. So create file node. You know what? I'm just gonna be lazy because I mean I already did that, right? I don't want to go through that again. So we're 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 we have this new website for our research group that we've built using Gatsby. So this is all statically compiled from data, uh, which is quite awesome. So I can and I wrote the plugin for it that basically ingests this data. So I'm just gonna be lazy and um, I'm gonna copy that plugin and rewrite it. Transformer, so yeah, we had the transformer thing, but uh, in our case, we don't really need to transform anything. We just need the output. So we define, uh, yes, so we define this on create node thing, right? Which basically returns, right? So in our, so the transformer plugin was transforming the, ah, right, okay, this is not what I need actually, God damn it, This is not what we need. Okay, Gatsby. Let me think. So we already have the data, so we don't need to transform anything. We actually want to be a source, right? And I guess, yeah, I guess, God, I should have <laughs> should have looked at file system source. Okay, sure. We I, looks like we like, we'll have to write it again. Um, let's see. So we got the index as the entry point, and index exports this. Okay, let's see. So we got the FS extras. We won't need any file system stuff. 
create file remote file from node buffer load contents okay so what do this okay is there gatsby source tutorial can we get a nice tutorial that shows us how to make a source creating a source plugin there we go um did it, can i collapse this thing somehow I, it's just annoying i don't want it it takes too much space that is still too much space why are you so large padding left there we go thank you very much much nicer to read won't you agree okay um fields are required media type okay what can the code look like source nodes data fetch there we go this is exactly what we want right so this is basically is it really what all, all that we need this seems a bit too too easy. Okay, uh, helper functions, Gatsby node helpers, option one, foreign key relation. We don't need any relations really. We just need a bunch of nodes. Okay, so what we really want to create is just a set of nodes for each article that would have a bunch of properties, right? So I guess this is time to go to the old websites and go into the server and go into the GitHub APIs that we use. So we got this uh, base API base URL, right? So this is going to be our base URL. This is our BXJS weekly repo. And uh, yes, I guess let's go into the episodes link. So we don't need cache anymore. My cat is wailing in the background in case you can hear weird sounds. So, okay. Cool. So we got, we get, I guess I need node fetch as well here, right? So, okay, let me install yarn odds uh, node fetch. I'm going to go with that. I mean, I really don't need anything larger than node fetch because we literally don't have to do anything but just load the link and uh, get the JSON response. So const fetch require node fetch. There we go. Okay, da, 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 da. rest get the episodes. Episode, we don't need cache. So this is gonna be our episodes, right? And uh, da, 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 we're done return. We don't need return because we don't really care about that. So in our case, um, let me think. We da, 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 create node, create node. So, okay, so we really need to run create node on each episode. Okay, um, console log episode. I think if I run the yarn start, we should now actually see the out. Oh, no, wait, forgot. I forgot to include the plugin into the Gatsby setup itself. Right, uh, so we, I guess we should just include it before everything else. So it's gonna be plugins, Gatsby source, Gatsby nodes. There we go. I think it should work like this. Does it work? Nope, it doesn't work. Uh, can't find, unable to find plugin. Perhaps you need to install package. Uh, do I need to point this way? I don't remember what I did in the last time. Nope, uh, module exports. Perhaps you need to, da, 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 da. Um, okay, let me just quickly have a look at my old DICE website. What did I what did I do here? I remember that I did something very similar, but I don't remember exactly. So um, okay, config. You know what? Maybe we don't even need a plugin. Here's the thing. So in this case, okay, resolve Gatsby Transformer. No, this is not it. This is not it. Where's my plugin? File system and uh, there's the transformer RDF. Oh, did I? I think I linked it in package JSON. Maybe we don't even need that. Uh, so we got, I got this Gatsby node thing that pre-processes markdown, but I don't know. No, okay, this doesn't work either. So we actually, this is, this is already a rendering bit. Okay, so we do need that. And if I remember correctly, I basically aliased it to the folder. Did I? Gatsby plugin, no, where did I? Oh, did I require it? Wait a second. Am I overthinking this right now? Just a second. Config. Um, RDF. So we got name RDF data, Gatsby transformer RDF. Where does this come from? And why does it, how did it work? I mean, this is the plugin, right? Oh, I had package JSON there. Okay, so you have to have package JSON. Okay, 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 okay. That's fine, that's totally okay. We can go with package JSON. 
Godsby source bxjs. Uh, what's the objective of the plugin? The objective of the plugin is to take the data from the GitHub API, the data about the episodes and the links within the bxjs weekly and transform it to the internal Gatsby data format. So we're gonna be able to actually go into the GraphQL and uh, see the data there. I will show you in a second once I sort this out basically. Okay, um, Gatsby, so I think it picks them up automatically from the plugins folder, is that what I remember? Yes, it does, there we go, cool. So there is now another error, throw an error lifecycle episode is not defined. Okay, so there's now problems in here. Uh, oh, whoops, that, there's a typo, there we go. <laughs> okay, so now once we restart, we should actually see the list of episodes, right? There we go, cool. So we see the list of episodes that are now contain URL to the uh, markdown and a bunch of other stuff, right? So this is perfect. So now we got the list of episodes, which means we can go for const episode of episodes. And uh, basically now we need to go through episode by episode. And I'm just gonna go process, uh, whoop, no, 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 no. I'm just gonna go process exit here to interrupt this so that we can see the episode format. There we go, cool. So we now have this, right? I can uh, open this, km, let's make it JSON. That is not JSON, it should be, whoops, uh, it should be km JavaScript. Yep, much better. Um, let's enable word wrap. Okay, uh, how did I get the episode? I'm using some plugin for smooth, uh, I think it's an option in the VS Code. It's like literally they introduced it like half a year ago or something, there's a parameter in settings that's like smooth, smooth cursor or whatever. It is default option, so there's no plugins. Um, okay, coming back to the websites, uh, to the, the episode URL. Okay, so there is my episode fetching. Uh, we're gonna do that, right? So our gonna be, so it's gonna be episode, and then what is the URL for it? It's just dot URL, right? Episode cache, we do not care about cache here. Uh, our text, okay, we need some markdown processing here. And console log results. Okay, we need a markdown processor. Um, let me think, plugins, yes, npm. Okay, so what is the GitHub mark? Uh, yeah, I guess I should just go to yarn package. Editor cursor, yes, exactly, this is the one, thank you. Um, okay, let me think for a second. So we need markdown, which is the most popular one, markdown it probably or something. In this case, the cool thing about it, be, 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 uh, God damn it, is because we are pre-compiling everything, we don't even care about this, even the speed that much. So we can just pick the most popular option and go with it, right? So which is kind of, <laughs> kind of damn great. Okay, yarn adds markdown it. Okay, cool. Um, const, well, no, 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 no. Um, okay, where is markdown it? Yes, yes, there we go. So const markdown it, thank you very much, const md, and then the rendering would be md render, right? So we pre-render the markdown, and now we should theoretically, once I run, uh, so not here, yarn start, we should see the full HTML markdown. Uh, markdown name path sha url, that looks like JSON to me. HTML, yeah, that is definitely, <laughs> I guess I need HTML URL, is that what I need? Am I using the wrong one? Uh, okay, let me quickly see what we used in the website itself. Out of curiosity, what the error what that VS Code is showing on the node fetch? Yeah, I was wondering, is I think it's like, ah, must be a backtick. So it's not my, um, I probably should put my editor config back here, so it's just, <laughs> It's just one's backticks everywhere. It's not, I'm not a fan of that, but uh, uh, can I, uh, you know what, like it doesn't matter for now. We, we can fix that later. It's just, you know, some people prefer backticks, some people prefer single ones, double quotes, whatever. Uh, we can fix it later. Okay, so let me think, we need compo, uh, no, we need pages, right? No, 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 pages, and we need index. So we got our, no, this is, we need the weekly thing. 
and we get the current episode file blah 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 episode url url encode url fetch episode url okay so it does take dot url interesting i oh okay it does take url and then fetches json no but wait this is the url current url um i am confused why then this is okay wait a second so we have this url right this is the what does this return? So I go this, this returns, so this is obviously metadata, right? Is that, no, this is HTML, this git, um, why does it return? Do, is it download URL what we want? Yeah, okay, so we want actually download URL. All right, there we go. So we want the actual markdown, not the not the metadata because why would we care about that? So, okay, in theory right now, we should see the proper markdown and proper HTML. Right, this looks correct. Okay, so we'll go, there's our markdown, there's our rendered HTML, cool. But the thing is we don't actually want that, right? So because this is not flexible. While this would allow us to create the whole episodes, what we want to do is we actually wanna parse each link by category title and URL. And I already did that. So we don't even actually have to do anything twice. We just want to tweak the code a bit. I'm going to go into the um, weekly because I have the CI script that double checks the duplicates, right? So there's our checks dupes thing. And if I remember correctly, episodes to documents, this is exactly what we used. Okay. And we don't even need HTML in this case. So I no, we, do we need it? Yeah, we, no, we don't need HTML because we're gonna render it ourselves. So I don't even need markdown thing here. Um, I probably should kill it as well. Um, so get the markdown. Okay, I need to, yeah, CD into plugins, yarn remove markdown it. So I'm, I don't need extra dependencies. It is nice as is. Now we are gonna take this episodes to, um, I just get it and we get it into my folder. That will be really nice. Okay, go back here, we get, come on. I probably should make a library out of it or something, but you know what, for now it's gonna work. Okay, where is my file? There we go. Okay, uh, yes, this relies on, right. So this actually works through the files, which we don't really care about. Uh, file to contents, file to documents is the function we want. So we don't care about this. We don't care about this. Now, what we care about is we care about file name. So yes, we care about the, I guess we don't, in this case, we don't really care about this. We care about text. We're gonna split it by the headers and we're gonna map it. Yeah, okay, so it's gonna use the file name here. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna use just the text. Episode name, what is he? Oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh. wait a second. Do I actually need a file name here? Okay, where is my markdown here? Wait a second. Um, console log, let's see, markdown. I, I kind of, it been so long last time I've actually used it. I barely remember what it did. Uh, and of course I haven't documented it properly. So it's, you know, my own fault. Markdown, it is not defined. Oh, 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 right. We don't need that anymore. So let's see, we do that. Okay, so we got this stuff and we don't actually, why does it tries to do anything? Okay, so we split text by, I need the Highland JS, right? So this is definitely a thing we need. Yarn at Highland because it will make things a lot easier for us. Okay. So we need the Highland JS. We, okay, Promisify. We don't need that because we don't actually work with files and path. So we literally just need that. Okay, uh, default array mods. This is, I don't even know if we're using it. Let me just collapse that. Okay, so what we do, we split the sections, which means that, uh, where's the markdown? Let me just, uh, I'm just gonna copy the markdown to be actually to visually see what the hell is happening. Da, da, da. There we go. There's the markdown, right? So we got this. Copy that. Okay. So we split the sections, which means we get the section name and then a bunch of links. So this is the section we get. Uh, section, section. So yeah, we basically strip the slash ends. We map the text. Okay, so we can kill that. We don't need file name anymore. We get the text, right? 
uh, episode name. We don't care about this. We can add the episode name later on and I screwed up the quotes brackets. Okay, so we got the text name. Yes, yeah, so name and links. We got the links text. There is there might be an error processing. Error processing. Um, episodes just go with that section trim okay episode name is something we can append later because we know it anyway right i think that should be it i am really annoyed by those bloody um quotes so i'm you know what i'm just, i'm just gonna take a second and um where do i get the i think i had it you know what i'm just gonna grab it from um dice websites i think i had the latest one i had there Highland is law dash for streams. Yes, it's basically like law dash for streams and it is really, really cool. Okay, I am gonna grab pretty RC from here. I'm gonna grab editor config from here. Do we have editor ESLint, ESLint RC? Uh, we don't have editor config, weirdly enough. Dot editor config. There we go. We have some oops. Uh, that is this needs to be collapsed. Okay, we don't need Java and Go. We don't need markdowns and XML. We do need that. Okay, this looks good. Now, next thing we need is prettier RC. We prettier ignore, but we don't have prettier RC. So prettier RC, we're gonna put that here. And I should have my ESLint config somewhere around here too. There we go. Roll that and ESLint RCJS. Uh, yeah, that is a lot more complex than what they used, but uh, that is totally okay. Now, probably there is a bunch of ESLint packages now missing. Um, no, it actually seems to, okay, there is ESLint plugin pre-tier. Yeah, so we need to install like a bunch of pre-tier stuff. Oh boy, okay. This is one of the things that I'm not, like on one hand, you know, I kind of get the idea behind ESLint 6 and the fact that, that everything is now, you have to install everything per package, right? But on the other hand, it is mildly annoying because you have to manually do this every time and it's like, ugh, come on now, okay. So let's see, we got, uh, where's the dev? ESLint, ESLint config, react app, flow type. Okay, so we basically need yarn at dev, prettier standards. I guess I can just kill the old ones as well because they're not gonna be used. Okay, uh, imports, oh God, okay, yeah, this is definitely not a fun part. <laughs> nodes um prettier promise come on now i should probably make my own config at some point because i'm maintaining this anyway right that sounds like a viable approach okay meanwhile um we i don't yeah i guess we could leave those as well uh maybe edit the so what was the original can i see changes Hello, where's my changes? Open change, no, what? Okay, I guess it doesn't want to show me changes. Oh, maybe because my root is not the git. Um, yes, Linder C, show me the changes. So we got quotes, extends react app. Okay, so we can, I guess we can just add this here. All right, whoops. And yeah, everything else is basically bollocks. Okay. So I think now it should stop bugging me about that. I hope, um, no, don't close this just yet. So coming back to our plug, there we go. No more, um, no more bollocks. Why are you complaining again? Create node as a sign, but never used. Okay, actions with actions. Uh, you should be formatting it. Format, no? My prettier C, single code, semi, end of line, trading comma. My prettier configured node fetch and what? Okay. Um, uh, okay, you know what? Okay, what, whatever, that doesn't matter right now. Okay, maybe create, yeah, I mean, I wanted to create an NPM package called basically bxjs eslint config, which would be my eslint config, which is essentially standard eslint with all these stupid, you know, rules like curly fragments, new line and whatever, like the cosmetic stuff that doesn't matter turned off. 
But uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it develops. Okay, anyway, uh, we're here. So we got the markdown. We need to, yes, we was looking at the episodes to this. Okay, what is settings? Where's my... Where's my prettier settings? Prettier VS Code. Uh, control the pre Yes, I think this should be on, right? And then we should end of line, da da da, 120. This looks correct. So what are you not happy about? Okay, there we go. So now it's happy. So it's just we have the warning about unused variable. That's fine. What are you not happy about here? Replace. So why don't you replace it? God damn it. Okay, you know what? I don't even care about you anymore. Um, right, so, okay. So we go through this, this, and this. Yeah, so theoretically, if we throw in, we don't need file name anymore, actually. Right, we should be able, so we get this file to documents, I guess, markdown. Let's call it markdown to documents to be a bit more reflective. Is it even used anywhere? It is never used. Kill that. Doc ID. Are we using this? Yes, we are using this. And I... Uh, don't even know if we, we don't need that, right? Like we don't care about this ID. Okay, we use everything else. Okay, cool. So we now need to import that function. Wire episode to documents and smart on to documents. There we go. Const documents, uh, mark down to documents, mark down. And if we log the documents now, so if I do yarn start, we should see the list of documents if the parsing doesn't actually fail. Stream. Oh, you're right. It has to be consumed. Blah, blah, blah. It has to be consumed as a stream. So in our case, what we need to do is to say to promise, right? And we return a promise, which means we can just say await over here. And theoretically, yeah, something went wrong. Promise constructor. Oh, right. I think you have to provide the whoops. Um, I'll, come on. Island.js. Where is Island.js? I think to promise takes the parameter of. I closed this too early. Um, I think it takes the parameter of promise constructor, if I remember correctly. To promise. Promise. Yes, there we go. This is what we want. I mean, I would default to the embedded promises now because like nobody uses custom promise implementations anymore right so it's like at least i haven't seen them in the wild for ages okay yeah something broke again uh to promise called on emitting stream what on stream emitting multiple values oh i guess we need to aggregate it somehow to array um can we just do no wait to uh, how do i aggregate the whole thing to array Collect, is that like collect to promise? Is that what I want to do? Yes, I guess this is what I want to do. Filter, collect to promise. Okay. Are we there yet? Can we now get an array of things? There we go. Perfect. Cool. Okay, so we got category, we got title, we got the URL and URL set if there is more than one, which is actually in 90% of cases it is not. So what we do need to do now is we need to actually uh, episodes lists. So we need to, where's our episode data? So this is, this is our file name, right? So we need to extract the episode name out of it, which also was here, but I killed it. <laughs> God damn it. Yep, I knew it was important for some reason. Okay, let me think. So there is the, there is the file. So there's the episode name. Okay. So const file name is episode, uh, come on, episode dot what? Uh, name, whoops, no, that is a wrong tab. Okay, and then episode name is this, okay, cool. Which means we can now say const uh, final docs is gonna be documents, I'm just gonna map him and I'm gonna say, so it's gonna be document, which is gonna be expanded document. And then we're gonna have, it's gonna be logging final docs. And in the original thing, we had episode name and file name. So let's do the same. Why are you not for me? Uh, because I forgot another bracket. There we go. Okay, so in theory, now we should have the full data structure, right? There we go. Nice. 
So we got the episode, we got the file name, we probably can replace the minus dashes with uh, Am I actually doing anything to episode name here? No, I don't, right? Uh, do we want to replace the dashes? Um, I guess why not, right? So it's like, it's gonna be a bit cleaner. Uh, so we're gonna replace all the dashes with spacebar. Okay, run that. So now we should have episode one. Cool, this works. So what we need to do now is, uh, I guess first we need to aggregate on all items, let's call it this way. And uh, essentially what we do is, instead of doing this, we just say for each item, all items push item, right? So this would basically, so this would basically first of all map it to the correct data structure and then push them into the common array which means that we can wait until it finishes with processing all of them and once it is done what we need to do is we need to be like all items for each item create uh what was it create note but what no typo create notes item this is literally all we need to do. And then yes, return at the end, which is basically useless at this point. Import nodes to Godspeed. Okay, so if I didn't screw anything up, and if we run yarn start right now, we should be able to actually go into the GraphQL backend and see all our data in there. Uh, what is coming? Okay, error processing episode. So there is some errors. Yeah, this is fine. There's like some minor things some minor errors. This should not affect the whole processing. That what? Okay, uh, there might be nodes that failed validation. Category internal counter. What is internal counter? Children, what? Uh, no, didn't pass validation. Child ID fails because ID is required. Oh, okay, so we do need this ID stuff. Okay, that's a bit unfortunate, but fine. So I guess we just, um, I guess we just generate IDs from here, right? So we just go, okay, this is doc ID here, and we're gonna go here, ID, gonna be doc ID plus plus, right? There we go. What are you not happy about again? Don't make functions, but wait, I didn't make any function within loop, what are you? Some of those ESLint rules are a bit silly. Okay, um, restart that. So we'll refetch the whole data. I hope GitHub doesn't ban me for hammering their API. Yeah, so we still get some errors. That is totally fine. And what is going on? Um, the new node didn't pass validation. Child ID fails because ID must be a string. God damn it, come on. Okay, yes, yes, sure, fine. I can, I can do this. Here you go, have a string. Happy now? Okay. Come on. Uh, yeah, so we got some failed validation stuff. What do you not like again? Uh, internal because child content digest fails because content digest is required. Uh, okay, I guess it has some required fields that we have to pass in. Ugh. Okay, um, right, you know what? Let's go and look at the reference for create nodes. So what is create, is there a reference somewhere? Come on, create nodes. There's gotta be a reference to what it actually expects. There we go. So ID, unique, must be globally unique, string. Okay, cool. Internal object. Okay, so it needs an internal object, uh, which means internal. Is um okay type content so once content digest which is gonna be um I mean what can we throw in there I guess, you know what let me just move it over here so it's easier to use keyboard to navigate between them um yeah just good title there you go have content digest um I think yeah you know what I'm gonna. I'm gonna change it a bit. I'm gonna say, okay, so we've got the ID, we've got the internal, and then we're gonna have data, which is gonna be this expanded D file name and episode name, because we're gonna be in the data, right? 
Okay, so I think that is all at once, maybe? Do you need anything else or are you happy now? Really need some, uh, I mean, I guess, you know, in the long run, it won't be really a problem, but uh, you know what we could do? We could actually speed it up and just uh, break here, right? So just try to import the first episode and if it fails, we fail immediately. Uh, type, yes, okay. So I guess media type type. Um, okay, cool, sure, why not? So let's go type, uh, link, whatever. What else do you want? Hey, there we go. Okay, cool. Right, so now that we have that, we should be able to actually go over here, uh, append GraphQL. Okay, come on. I know that you can, what is happening with my Chrome today? There we go. So we got the GraphQL editor from the Gatsby and uh, which means that in our case, there is, this is my old query. So there's links. Right, uh, I guess all link is what we want. And we want edges, nodes, data, so we want ID, and basically all of that, right? So uh, why are you not, there we go. And once we did this, we get all our imported links in a nice format, which we can then render, well, anywhere we really want, right? So we can actually group them by file name, group them by episode name, and then get the whatever data we want. Okay, so now we can remove that break and actually import the whole thing. I think we're actually done with data here because all that is left to do is just to take this data and then render it properly, right? Um, okay, let me think. So we don't need that anymore. We don't need this, I guess. So we don't need... Um, okay, I'm gonna leave this. I'm gonna duplicate the tab and just go localhost 8000. Okay, um, we don't need actions anymore because we got the data now. We don't need Highland anymore, which is great. All right, so we literally only now need to render that, which is absolutely perfect. So we are done basically with, um, with our plugin, which is kind of cool. Gatsby is a very neat little thingy. Like it allows you so much flexibility in terms of generating static stuff is just insane. Okay, so um, right. I am, um, okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna leave this section, I'm gonna kill the, uh, do I, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, okay, you know what, I'm just gonna kill that as well. So we now have the empty page, right, right, there we go. Um, I mean, it can be tricky to configure, especially, you know, unless you are not familiar with, um, with some of the concepts behind it, but once you get it, it is actually pretty cool. What is this? This is not a file I want in my repo. This is all the uh, contributing. This is also not what I need. Or is it? I don't, you know, okay, whatever. I can, I, can, I can sort through the miscellaneous stuff later on. Okay, so what we need now is we need um, a file, right? So, okay, we need, no, we need a component that is gonna be called, let's create, Let's create episodes list first. Episodes list. Um, maybe that is actually should be a page. Yeah, I guess making a page would be would make more sense. Episodes list JS. Just gonna copy index for now. So we got this keywords style bxjs episodes all just we um right if if only i could type i think something like this right and uh now we should modify the header to go like all episodes so it's lists this should be good okay cool um theoretically so i guess yeah let's just add something here at least so we see that it's actually properly rendering rendering there we go, so we got the list. Okay, so now what we need is we need the GraphQL query. And there was a way to do that. Um, <laughs> there was a way to do that in an easy way and I don't remember it. So I'm gonna go and uh, look at my old project because I'm lazy. So yes, you can define, right. So you can export this uh, GraphQL query over here, right? So export defaults page. 
that is fine. And then we can export GraphQL query, but in our case, this is gonna be a lot simpler than that. And we need to import GraphQL from Gatsby. There we go. Okay, and the query itself is gonna be, um, right, so we don't actually need all of that, right? So in this case, we are listing episodes. So we need file name and episode name. And here's the, so yes, please distinct. Um, ta -da -da, children, so where is my children data? No, wait, Aaron, children, children, where the hell is my data? Come on now, data, there we go, data, episode name. This is basically, so actually what we want is this, we don't care about the ID, right? So this is literally, um, how is this distinct? Data, uh, yeah, I, I assume it's supposed to be distinct, but it's not, but am I using distinct wrong? Okay, wait a second. GraphQL distinct. How to use distinct query? I already did that. Distinct true. Context, distinct field title. Okay, am I, do I not need to, what am I doing wrong here? Is it like nodes? Is it like a wrong children parent data? So it should, this should be distinct, right? So why is it giving me non-distinct value. Oh, 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 it does give them. Okay. Ah, okay. So <laughs> wait a second. So I just basically don't need this. Oh, now I get it. Okay. This is how it works. Okay, cool. This, <laughs> this is a lot simpler than I thought it would be. Okay, cool. So, right. So the result is data or link distinct, uh, which means that, okay, where's my old page? So we get it as a properties, um, data, all link and then distinct, right? And okay, you know what? I'm just gonna be lazy and do this just to make sure it actually renders. JSON stringify um, distinct now too. So nicely formatted JSON. In theory, if I didn't screw anything up, we should now see a nice array of episodes here, perfect. But uh, in our case, we actually want episode name, not file name. I don't know why I took file name, why we should be episode name. There we go. Right, and uh, here's the question. I probably also should add episode date, right? Because this is kind of important, I guess. How do we do, is it important? I guess it's not that important, or maybe we can add it later. Okay, you know what, for now is fine. Okay, cool, so we got this um, array, and now we're just gonna basically say, okay, so this is our div, and let's name, call distinct um, episodes, right? And then I'm just gonna go episodes map. So it's literally episode name here. I'm gonna map it to a div. Uh, yes, I mean, tags would be nice, but we don't really have any tags. Um, so, okay, so cool. So we have, uh, wait a second. So we need to, first of all, we need a link from Gatsby, which will go to slash episode name. Yeah, I guess this, this should work fine, right? Episode name, okay. So this will create a page that lists all episodes. This is all links. Uh, this is also very poorly sorted. <laughs> God damn it. Um, right, um, I guess, does locale compare actually sorted correctly? I forgot. A locale, uh, locale compare, yeah, B. This sorted correctly? Oh, uh, right. I need a key here as well. Um, right, I guess it actually doesn't. Okay, um, so how can we sort it? We can sort it in, a, well, relatively simple way, really. Just number a replace episode, right? So we just kill that. 
minus number b replaced. I mean, because in our case, the data is very much predefined. Why are you doing this? Um, that's not how the numbers should be sorted, right? I think. Wait a second, console log, let's log the episodes thing. Just do that, okay. Um, inspect this, get the console. So there's our episodes, okay, store is a global variable, we got temp one, so we're gonna go temp one, map, item, item, replace. So wait a second, so if I go this, yeah, this is not sorted correctly, right? Why is it not sorted correctly? Uh, parse, no, I mean, number and parse int is exactly the same, right? So theoretically, if we just go in here, okay, you know what, let's try this way. So if I go map uh, item item episode spacebar, and if, oh, right, this is why, because, because I'm an idiot, right, of course. There we go, because replace takes two arguments and I forgot about that. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes per there we go, now it works. Okay, so I'm just, yes, I'm just an idiot. That's as usual. Okay, um, right, right, right. Um, we got this and now it's sorted from, so we need to actually sort it reverse because you usually care about the latest episode. Okay, reload that, what? wait, what? I'm sorry, what? Number B replace episode, yeah. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> yep, that's, yeah. Okay, uh, no, that is right. I'm replacing the wrong thing. There we go, finally. There we go, okay, cool. So this now works. All right, so we go home, we got the home. If we go to all episodes, we got the episodes. If we click on it, we get the 404 because this page doesn't exist. Now comes in another cool part about Gatsby we can actually pre-generate pages dynamically. So we can say, okay, you know what? I'm gonna take all this awesome data we got in the GraphQL backend and we're gonna generate the episode pages from it absolutely dynamically, which is pretty damn awesome. So let's call it templates, right? And we're gonna have um, episode template, or I guess episode, just let's call it episode JS, whatever. I'm gonna copy this. We do not need GraphQL here, if I remember correctly. So it's gonna be called episode page. I'm gonna, for now, I'm just gonna do JSON stringify data. It's gonna be pre-wrapped. Okay, cool. And um, just gonna do that. So we XJS Weekly and then the title would be an actual title of the episode. Um, right, so we were gonna have to look at what exactly is gonna be later on. Okay, now we're gonna do the generation, uh, which I did in, again, my old project. So I'm just gonna be lazy and take templates and take the, so we need the Gatsby node thing now. Uh, we don't have it, I believe yet. That's been a uh, node.js, right? I uh, guess I'm just gonna kill that for now. So yes, I'm gonna take all of that. We don't need all of this because this is like a lot of stuff um, that is basically not required. We don't need render RDF type. We don't need render markdown type. I guess, yeah, I mean, Okay, well, create pages is what we definitely need. Create file path is what we don't need as well. Don't think we need path either. So, person template. So yeah, there we, oh no, we do need path because we need to resolve the template. Okay, and I guess we need at least render markdown type. Yep, okay. So, okay, uh, yes, we don't need any of those redirects here. Don't care about that. We do need create page. So basically the way it works is that on the build time, you can execute any GraphQL query and then do something with the data. On create nodes, internal nodes. So this is the markdown rendering, which is we don't really need. 
So this is uh, this runs on what? Create pages. Okay, so this is just, I guess we don't need the node handling because we don't care about markdown rendering in this case, but we do need this one of the render markdown types thing, right? And in our case, we can just take, because we're gonna just have one literally, we don't care about any of this stuff. And I'm just gonna go like this. And okay, so we resolve the template. In our case, this is gonna be, uh, no, it's gonna be here. It's gonna be source templates episode, right? So this is our, let's call it episode template. Okay, um, so episodes results. So then we need to run some sort of a query that will return us all of our episodes data, right? So we can go to the GraphQL uh, thing here. We no longer need this distinct thing. It means we need edges, nodes, ID data, and all of this stuff, right? Oh, right, because I'm stopped actually. Okay, of course this won't return anything because my <laughs> backend is actually down. Okay, so we got the episode results. Uh, if there are errors, we're gonna reject it. If there is no errors, we're gonna go through all link edges node. Each node is gonna be, so we actually need to group that. Um, okay, you know what? I'm gonna return here for now so that it's not get executed. I need to start the GraphQL back because we need to write a query. Uh, what are you, Gatsby source file system, what? Um... Oh, I don't actually need that, right? I think. Okay, this works now. Does it now query in the, uh, yeah, it does query the GitHub again. For some reason doesn't hit the cache. But you know what, again, that's not a pr big problem for us because this build is gonna be run once a week. So it shouldn't be uh, too much of a hassle. And maybe we can even somehow make it push instead of pull. So instead of pulling the GitHub API, maybe we can somehow make the GitHub push the data to it via GitHub Actions or something. Okay, let me just refresh that. Uh, come on, I used to, yes, you are started. Are you, what is, what is wrong with Chrome and port forwarding? Come on now. Come on now, I know you can work, there we go, okay. Cool, yeah, so this returns everything. Uh, can you group by, so what is group? Okay, so if we group by data file name, is that how I do this? Is just go like group and then edges, nodes, ID, Okay, so this give me a bunch of, yeah, this seems to be actually grouping them. So I don't even need to do anything. Okay, and then just select this stuff. And how does it look? So we got this group, but how do I know which group is it? I guess I can just take the one of the values, right? Uh, yeah, Carlos, thank you for tuning in to stream. Obviously the VID is gonna be there uh, on YouTube, you know, almost immediately after I finish as usual. So field, field value, total count, I guess. So what does this gives us? Uh, okay, oh, there we go, this is perfect. Okay, cool. This is actually really cool. I did not use that feature before, but this is very handy, so. Essentially, we can basically get the episodes, like the links split by episodes in a very simple fashion. This is, okay, sometimes GraphQL is actually quite nice. Not all the time, but you know, okay, we got this, uh, which means all link group, okay. Group, and then for group, we got edges, field, field, uh, field value and total count. Okay, um, can remove the return so I don't get this annoying highlight. Okay, create page can kill that for now. Okay, and that means console log. If I just log all of that, right? We should be able, whoops. Uh, why are you complaining here? Uh, okay, so it's just formatting complaints. Okay, so if I restart that, we should theoretically see 
a bunch of groups that are being, or a bunch of pages pre-processing. Yeah, there was an error there. Okay, I guess, you know what? I'm gonna go and uh, into my plugin and do the break again so that we stop hammering, I guess. Um, Let's do it this way. Let's episodes limits. Let's go for three episodes and then we go episodes limit minus minus. If episodes limit equals zero, then we just break. Okay, so just basically gonna finish first three episodes and don't wait for the whole thing to finish. So what was the error there? Uh, Gatsby note, throw an error, cannot read property for each of undefined. What did I screw up? Uh, data, all link, oh, 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 there we go. Right. So, hey, there we go. Okay, cool. So we now edges, object, pro node, prototype, node. Okay, so yeah. So this seems to be working perfectly fine. Cool. Um, just to be sure that we're actually fine. Let me just log edges. Um, I'm gonna do edges for each node, right? And then I'm just gonna go console log node. We are not gonna write edges here. So theoretically, we should now see the header for the episode and then after that immediately edges. Uh, yeah, that seems perfectly fine, right? So yeah, we can basically now create the page. So path is gonna be slash, and then it's gonna be um, field value, right? So field value is our, let me just copy one of those so that I actually have it in front of my face. Oh boy, there's so many links. Where's the data? Come on, come on now. Probably gonna be easier to just copy it from my GraphQL, GraphQL thing. Okay, you know what? Yes, I'm just gonna go, yes. So we got field value, this is our episode one. So this is exactly path, I guess. Encode URI is, code URI component is actually what we want here, right? Because this is, can be like with spaces, dashes, whatever. Then we do episode template and then context. This is the data, which is gonna be um, data will be edges, right? So this is exactly what we want to do. We don't care about the rest of the stuff, basically. What are you complaining about now? I guess it's all prettier formatting for some reason. Why is it not matching my prettier RC? That because ESLint RC because max length is something. Wait a second. Oh, you know what? Okay, whatever. For now, it doesn't even matter. Okay, doesn't it's not not critical. Not gonna waste time on this. Okay, now that we have the episode template, we don't need this query here. Um, here's the question: Where the hell does the data comes from when we actually build it? Uh, whoops. Yarn starts. Okay. Got this. Okay, so theoretically, it should now generate the pages for episode one to four, I think, right? Um, da -da 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 -da, where is my BXGS? Where we go? All episodes. Oh, could you please start working? Here we go. Episode one. And it is non existent for some reason. Why is it non existent? Is it because you do, no, you don't do plus, right? Um, okay, we could use GraphQL again to debug that real quick. So all side page, um, yes, we don't need that anymore. All side page, distinct episode. No, there is a side page episode one, right? So it should actually be, so it is generated page, but, Source pages, no, but that's not what you should do, right? So this, there is a side page. Okay, uh, no, not group edges, node, ID, internal content. 
content is zero. Uh, we did not pass it through the content, right? So there's the path slash, yeah, so this should, seems like it should work. Why is it, why is it 404? Okay, that is interesting. Uh, page will automatically refresh, blah, blah, blah. So do we have any error? We don't really have any errors here either, right? So this all seems to be correct. We do, did I get the correct? So create page, component, episode templates, context, data edges. Okay, um, first of all, where does this context come from? Plugin creator ID is interesting as well. What is plugin creator ID? No, this is like different stuff. Okay, parent, internal, I don't care about this. Component episodes, yeah. So it mapped. No, this is the episodes list. There is the episode, and it is mapped to templates episode. Okay, did I do I have the wrong template or something? Let's see here. So we got the export default function. Yeah, okay. Page query. Okay, right. So I guess this was my problem because I actually need to specify the um, the query as well, right? Uh, okay, so we need path, yes. And then which means that we get this path, which means we don't actually need to pass. Do I actually need to pass? I guess in this case, we don't even... I guess we can just do distinct query then, right? So we can just say, okay, we want, well, let me think. So we just need a list of episodes and then generate it per episode because episode will fetch the queries themselves anyway, which means we can just go and be like, okay, uh, all link distinct and we want episode name, right? So we actually want this. Literally, this is like super, a lot easier than I expected, okay? All link distinct for each and it's gonna be basically episode name, episode name and episode template context is empty. Cool. Okay. So we do that, which means here we should query uh, for specific nodes a filter that have data with episode name that is equal to episode one, right? So for example, and then we're going to select ID and then we're going to select all of that. There we go. This is exactly what we want. So I'm going to copy this. Uh, we actually don't need, no, we do need all links, I think, right? So, okay, we can kill this, kill that. I think I can just go dollar path over here. If I'm not screwing anything up, let's see. I feel like we're not gonna finish this today, but you know, at least to just compile the pages and then we're gonna have another one where we actually uh, finish it up and deploy. Okay, episodes list, episode one, no. Um, God damn it. Should I just strip the spaces from there or something? Why is it? Is it because of the space bar? I feel like it might be, right? So let's try doing this. Um, replace. You know what? You know what? Um, let me think. Episode name. Can we just pre generate the URLs as well? So, okay, and then, so URL is gonna be episode name, replace this for just empty stuff, right? And then here, instead of doing distinct episode name, we're just gonna do distinct episode URL, right? And then we just literally got this, and I can even pre-generate this, so I won't have to assemble that later on. There we go. I think that is probably a lot better. Right. And now that we get the URL, so we're going to go episode URL here equals path. 
And that should be an exact match, right? I think that should work. I just want to basically figure this out and then we can commit it to develop and wrap up the stream and then continue at a later date, basically. Okay, well, at least it compiled. So let's see, GraphQL. Um, no, 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 no. We need all links, edges. So let's see, is our episode URL is there and it is, it looks good. Okay, cool. And hey, it actually worked. Okay, so there was the space bar. I guess it doesn't handle it properly for some reason, but we do actually get our episode render correctly. Cool. Um, now we do need to group it by category now. So we, I'm gonna tweak the query a bit, and then we basically can, you know, commit that and uh, be done with this for today. But you know, just just to make it a bit nicer. Okay, so we got this for episodes. I'm gonna throw it in here. And what I'm gonna do is, okay, so I'm done care about the data now. I'm gonna say group net, no, 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 group this uh, by category, right? And then you're just gonna get me ID, all that stuff basically. And then also filter by whatever. Okay, so I just need, this stuff, right? Okay, let's see. So we leave the filter there. We add the group above this basically, right? You say group and then another over here and then we can kill this thing here, I think. Yep, there we go, cool. Okay, so now it should be grouped by, uh, right, I need the group um field value field and field value okay uh group yep 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 come on there we go okay so now we should get the category yeah okay cool so we got the category field value this is articles this is libs and demos and now we should have yeah that's it basically for first episode cool so actually yeah okay i mean obviously pre is destroyed the page basically but it's kind of okay so in our case, we get the data, the data will contain all link, right? Um, <laughs> let me just not say that yet. So all link group, all link group, and the group is basically an array of different groups, right? Yep, perfect. Okay, so this is exactly what we want. I think it will be a good spot to stop. Um, I probably need to edit the prettier stuff as well. Okay, cool. Uh, git commit, set up basic content, uh, I guess, bxjs weekly episode ingestion and episode rendering. So let's call it data rendering because it's not really the rendering itself yet. Right, sign the commits and we are git push goods. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's basically it for the stream for today. Well, obviously there's like a ton of work left, but we're getting there and I think it's gonna be a lot better than uh, the previous website. So we are almost done. So basically all the work that's left is just the cosmetic stuff to make it look nicer and format the episodes and then add the search, which I think also should be a lot better than the one we have currently. But uh, we're gonna do that on the next live stream. Uh, for now, I think that is uh, basically it. If you guys have any questions or suggestions, feel free to throw them into the chat right now. If you are watching, this on YouTube, uh, again, ask in comments. I'm more than happy to answer. And uh, yeah, we also have a Discord server that you can join to chat about all that stuff. And I guess that's basically it from my side. Seems like no more questions or suggestions. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, looking forward to the next live stream and I see you next time. Bye.